again today with another listen up boom reaction for you guys listen up in my back yes they're back i don't know why when i said i having a comeback i was like wait already but then i realized actually yeah, it's been a minute it's been a minute maybe because i reacted to the documentary um if you haven't seen that it's over on my patreon if you want to go and we'll catch it it's on the ball pipe and tear Maybe because I reacted to the documentary, it seems like it hasn't been that long compared to the last comeback. Anyway, they're back. I'm super excited. I will, of course, be doing an album first listen as well. So in this video, I'll be reacting to the Unforgiven MV. And then uh, the first three B-sides, which are The World Is My Oyster 2023 version, uh, Burn the Bridge and No Return. And part two of the album first listen will be up soon after this. I'm super excited. Let's just go. Disclaimer, I don't like to react with captions on as I find them distracting. I like to concentrate on the music and the music production is what I like to comment on the most. When I'm looking at the words at the bottom of the screen, I'm missing parts of the song, their vocals, and I'm missing parts of the MV and choreo. I'll read the lyrics later in my own time. Okay guys, it's here. Let's go. Let's set up. Unforgiven featuring Nile Rogers. Actually, I have no idea who Nile Rogers is, I don't think. Apologies, but I'm sure I'm gonna get to know now. Official MV, let's go. Oh, it burnt. Where is this? This kind of trippy. I feel like I'm dreaming right now. Whoa. We should just see the line, please. This is about to be some bad arsery.
them devil wounds. Is that a diet? Is that a sample? It's not interpolation. That is a, that is a sample. That is an Elio Morricone sample. The set of them. Okay, so I have thoughts. I have positive things to say, and I have some, I wouldn't say negative things to say, but things that I just, um, not complete. No, no. I have things that I like, and then things that I'm just mad on, basically, uh, but nothing that I dislike. So, um, so what I really did like, first of all, was the sampling, the use of that Ennio Morricone sample from The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. I'm a huge spaghetti western fan. I love spaghetti westerns, especially the good, the bad, the ugly. Um, a fistful of dollars uh, for a few dollars more. Like I love those movies a lot. They're movies that I grew up listening to. And saying that, Ennio Morricone is one of my favorite composers of all time, um, and he made that song. So to hear that, and it's like I've heard lots of K-pop songs that have used that sort of western sound, but I haven't heard anyone actually really go for that Ennio Morricone sort of sample. Um, I've seen nods to it, but this was like very clear, so I really, really like that. Um, I love the melodies in the chorus. I pointed it out, but you had this sort of like really sort of playful moment, and then a bit of a sassy moment, which I feel represents Le Seraphim really, really well. Um, you have really nice soft moments with them, but then you also have these sassy moments, but it's really balanced. Do you know what I mean? Their flavour and the vibe they give off is very balanced. I, I feel it's almost elegant and soft, but also sassy and quite hard at the same time. Um, other than that, I feel the song was quite bland. Um, it was fun. It was a fun song, but I feel like it didn't. there weren't any moments that made me go, whoa, I need to hear this song again for this moment. That didn't happen for me, unfortunately. And if I was to rate or rank the titles, this would be my least favourite. Just because I feel like it didn't really take me anywhere. I feel like, as well, this is probably the MV's fault. I've mentioned this many, many times before. I don't really like it when MVs sort of stop, give us a moment, um, like a scene, and then add in like sound effects. And then, so for the first chorus, I didn't like that. I would have preferred if they'd had that moment for the second chorus. I would have liked the song to have just flowed and because this is our first time hearing this song, experiencing this song, I feel like it kind of ruined the experience for me, just having that break. Um, I think it would have worked better maybe during the second chorus if they'd added in that break. Do you know what I mean? But other than that, I found it very, very enjoyable. I liked the choreo. I loved the MV. The visuals were absolutely stunning. They were stunning. We had some really nice vocal moments as well. But like I said, because there weren't any moments in the song that made me think, whoa, like nothing really stood out to me too much. I can't really say, yeah, this was incredible. It was very enjoyable, but it didn't blow me away. It didn't blow me away like their previous two title tracks, I must say. Um, but I don't hate it and I wouldn't skip it. It's not a skip. It's just not a, wow, this blew my mind. But I love the concept, love the use of the sampling, uh, love the MV. Uh, Let's go on to the first three B-sides. Okay guys, let's go. Uh, the first B-side is The World Is My Oyster. This is the 2023 version. Let's go. I remember it giving me like this sort of 90s dystopia sort of movie, like the Matrix vibes, you know what I mean? Maybe they've changed what they're saying. I 
This makes me want to go sniper gun. Someone needs to edit this for those uh, cyber boss under the bridge. You know that video. <laughs> okay, yeah. So like I said, I've never really listened to that intro since like the first time I reacted to it. So I, I don't think I'll be able to tell if there were that, any di that many differences, if any, uh, but if there were, let me know. Keep me informed in the comments. Let's go on to the first proper B side, which is called Burn the Bridge. Let's go. That's a burning reference. Already. No, already that. So, hear me out. First of all, that instrumental was absolutely stunning. Those guitars, those guitars, the little plug-in, just sounded so pretty, okay? And then when those pads started to come in, and then that drum and bass beat started to come in, drum and bass is really in at the moment, I feel, especially that sort of old school, uh, late 90s, early 2000s sort of drum and bass style. I feel like it, uh, Pink Panther S kind of brought that sound back a little bit. Um, and then New Jeans have been using it a lot. I feel like it's very in at the moment and it works for me. It's very summery, it just has a really nice vibe. So I like that Les Serafim had their own little take on it. Um, the only thing is, I'm this is just a, a me personal thing, I don't like talking on songs, um, especially if it's a lot, that's just how I am. Like, some of, I, there's these songs that I really, really like, I can't think of one specifically right now, but there's like intervals within the song where there's talking a bit in between, and I don't know why it just ruins the vibe of the song for me personally. I feel like it's odd, and I can't vibe with the song. I think it might be my ADHD. I get uh, distracted really easily, and when it's almost 
a sensory thing I feel, I get distracted. As I'm trying to vibe and listen to the music, it's as if someone's talking to me and I can't concentrate on the song because I feel like I'm being spoken to. And it's like, it's just mayhem in my brain. I think it might be like a neurodivergent thing, possibly. If you're neurodivergent, you've got autism, ADHDs, any of them things, let me know if you feel the same way or it might just be a me personal thing. Um, so I was a little bit, oh, I wish the talking cut out a little bit earlier than it did, but I'm glad the whole thing wasn't talking. And we got those melodies at the end because that build up was stunning. And those melodies that, oh, was beautiful and I loved how the instrumental changed there as well and we went from having just that drum and bass style to having a little bit more sort of live instruments the drums sounded like a proper like a uh, drum set we had that electric guitar come in as well uh, stunning stunning song I just don't think I'll be able to listen to it because of the talking and I explained why anyway let's go on to the next one okay guys let's go the last b-side for part one no return into the unknown So that one wasn't really my vibe personally. It's not a song that I choose to put on and listen to, but it definitely had some really, really nice moments. I think the melodies were very, very pretty. I also really, really appreciated that sort of brass section, the little brass moment we had in the chorus, but specifically the instrumental moment we had. I feel like I complain about this a lot all the time. I just wish K-pop songs would have more little instrumental moments or like, like little instrumental breakdowns. I get why they don't because as members, everybody needs their time, their moment. You can't really waste that on an instrumental. But I love that part. I love that we just had that moment and we got to hear the brass section really, really clearly. But other than that, that, that vibe just isn't really for me. It's not something I'd put on and listen to. Kind of reminded me of like a specific third gen sound that was popular. Also, it's giving me like, um, what's her name? 
that white that white lady uh taylor swift taylor swift uh it's giving me taylor swift vibes even though i've never really listened to her but that's the, um, I, that's the type of music i imagine she puts out um it was cute it was a cute fun song not something i put on and listen to personally um but yeah that's the end of part one i will see you in a minute for part two and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you didn't like it subscribe if you haven't subscribed if you have subscribed i love you i love you gonna find me on instagram guys gonna find me on twitter and yeah goodbye oh